Hello and welcome to this video about Sengen ATS909X2. In this video we are going to be taking it apart and I will show you how it looks like on the inside as well as how the build quality of this early unit is. The unit itself was made, you see, it doesn't see here, but it says on the antenna uh, 2020 10th month and the radio itself comes with this short antenna, headphones and there is also a power supply which is a switch mode power supply there we can see the rating also 202010 and now let me unplug it from the radio and let's take a look at what we have so first we have lost the charging indicator which we had previously this is not blinking anymore and now we can open it up and then remove the batteries So we have the four rechargeable batteries here and we should note that there is a screw down in here, I don't know if you can see it, right here, we should not forget about it. We have two screws here and a few screws here as well, we have three, one, two and the third one is here. So uh, we do not need to remove the antenna to get inside of the radio. First step, which we should not forget, is uh, yeah. Now that we have removed the batteries, we have this indicator that the radio is running on capacitor, which is going to deplete itself relatively soon. So, before we remove the screws, we need to take care of these two knobs. We have the tuning knob and the volume knob. This one you just take off. It's being a bit difficult right now, but you can just pry it off carefully, of course, not to manage the potentiometer and for the tuning knob we can use this tool for example and just pop it off again carefully and now that it clicked we can turn it around and pay attention to these notches that we have because later on they will need to align with the places here on the knob uh, the next important thing is of course the screwdriver we should take care because this is a crosshead screwdriver but it is not the regular Phillips which we have in Europe and I assume United States as well. Instead this is the Japanese Phillips. I fixed it, called it J1 and it is important to use the proper one not to strip the, not to strip the screws. So let's start with this screw here. So it went out. Next we have one screw here. It's out as well. Then there is a little screw here as well. And let's try to pin them up with a magnet. Well, they won't budge. Let's see what we can do. Of course, now they are being difficult. So, one, two, three. And now we can put the antenna back. There are no screws here at all, but we have the three screws at the back. So let's open this up. There is one screw here. Which of course now does not want to move, but we can extract it, for example, maybe with this tool. 
Yep, here it comes. And then there are these two difficult screws here. I call them difficult because I do not have the appropriate tool to remove them. They require a long and thin screwdriver, which is a bit longer than the tip I have here. So I'm going to remove the tip, put this here inside, and then rotate it with the screwdriver without pressing it completely in. Of course, it's going to pop out several times and so on, but we can unscrew the screw. After we do a few rotations, it should be we should be able to reach it properly with the screwdriver all the way in, like it is now. And it is unscrewed, but it's stuck inside. But it should make us no trouble when we are going to open the case. So let's do the same thing here. but that is okay. Now we have this gap here, which opened up, and we have also a bit of a gap here. So now we are going to start with this side, where we have the RF gain control. And now we need to be up oh, one screw came out. Very careful, because the speaker wires are soldered underneath to the backboard which we have inside. So we are going to very carefully lift this up. It's going to jump a little bit, so we should be careful not to damage the speaker wires, and then move it a bit to the right for these controls here. Okay, and there we have it. This is the first step of the disassembly, so to say. And let's see what we can see. So here is the speaker, and we have the LCD. Uh, it's mostly protected from dust, but there is a little gap here where the dust can come in, unfortunately. So this application of this protective tape was not really the best. Maybe we can fix that later. And let's take a look at the PCB. We have two PCBs, one here with the buttons and another one here. And there are these spring contacts in between. And there is also a bit of manual soldering work here. All of these contacts have been soldered by hand, or so it seems. Here, here, and here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there are lots of flux traces here on the board. Like here, 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 and so on. I hope that it is uh, actually a proper no clean flux. But I personally don't like to see sticky flux traces instead of electronics. I'm not sure if that is just my own personal bias or not. Maybe I'm just a bit, being a bit picky. What I don't like is this point here. Let me see if I can focus on it. Did it focus? Yeah, so we have a bit of a damage to the solder mask here, probably as an accident, and someone, I think, tried to repair it by putting a bit of solder on it, but this wasn't really done in a proper way. The coverage here should have been a bit better, and there is also some dried flux, this black residue here. So we have some potentiometers. Uh, well, not potentiometers, but I think more something like variable capacitors. We have a trimmer capacitor here, probably for this crystal, which is a 4.332 megahertz crystal. And there is also a trimmer capacitor here, but not sure for what it is. Perhaps later when we get the service manual, we will be able to find out. What I like are these markings here. You see, they're visible. Yeah, so it says, say, 2.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.
so we have the specifications for the coil which was wound I think just for this unit and we have also say 4.2.5.06 of specifications for this coil and so on for this coil next we have an opto isolator here probably for isolating the external connections which we have on this side of the unit for line out standby headphones and so on uh, we will see more, more but we go a bit deeper in and on this side what i don't really like is this glue i do not know how it is going to yeah stay on in the future if it's going to crack in a few years or if it's going to take a really long time before it cracks mm, I, I don't know I, I cannot say if this is positive or negative but it is something to keep in mind there is also a bit of hot glue here and on this coil as well uh, yeah uh, I think that this type of glue has a perhaps a tendency to crack after a while but I could be wrong so let's now very carefully remove this PCB the issue with this one is that it has many connections to the PCB underneath it so we have to be very careful with them we also have several screws so let's see then there is this one here Oh, and by the way, this here is the data port, uh, which is perhaps used in manufacturing or something like that. Uh, I don't really see any damage on it, so perhaps it was never used. I'm not sure. Maybe it could be used to update the firmware at a later stage or something like that. Now this PCB is now loose. You can see now we have to be careful because we have this um, control for RF gain here. And now we need to lift the right side, then carefully extract the control outside. And when it comes out, and this is a bit difficult now, uh, we will be able to move the board. We see if I should do this this way or thing is there are these interconnects in between you see here and so on which make it difficult to move this board a lot you need to be very careful not to damage the connections so i'm going to unplug this very very carefully and then we have another one here Okay, now we can move this board and we can oops, see what else is there. Hmm. Yeah, there is one more connection which we need to remove. Let's see if I can move it. It's this one here, you see. there we go okay it's not a bit better yeah so now we can move this board and we can take a look inside and what i don't like i don't know if you can see this let me see yeah it's a bit difficult but this cable here was actually crushed it was squished when this uh, cable assembly was installed so mm, the, it doesn't look heavily damaged but it's not something good for 
long-term reliability, I think. And uh, now let's take a look here. Uh, we can also see, for example, with this connector. Yeah, you see this? Uh, it was actually touched with a soldering iron and burned, I think, during manufacture. So it's not really as perfect as it was back when it was new. Uh, so maybe Sengen should pay a bit more attention to can manufacturing, uh, which they are doing, to make sure that s such things don't really happen all that often. I don't know if they are often or not, but it's not something very positive, let's say. Uh, the back of this, the back of the screen here is actually shielded. Ah, you can see. You see? So we have actually a shield here. And there is also this copper foil here as well on the inside, which is probably an extra layer of shielding. So they did try to mitigate the radiation, which we believe is coming from the screen and causing interference. But perhaps in some cases it could have been a bit better uh, because sometimes you can actually receive the noise from the, from the actual uh, screen when you put your hand on it while the radio is working. So yeah, this is here as a, I think a simple potentiometer. Uh, we have actually quite a bit of hand soldering here, for example. Also with flux remains and everything. This capacitor here looks to be a bit charred. Uh, maybe someone touched it with a soldering iron accidentally or something like that. It doesn't look to be the to be in the best shape. Uh, hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's damaged. Well, perhaps it is a bit damaged, but this isn't actually the best quality. Let me see if I can show this to you better or not, or maybe I will have to take some photos of it. Yeah, I have it open, so let's take some photos and then I'll edit them in. Let's see if there is anything else which doesn't really look perfect here. Yeah, so flux residue and so on, as I mentioned, but I hope uh, they, they, they must be using no clean flux, so that should be okay, theoretically. Uh, yeah, so this is it about this board, I, I, I think. In several places, this shield but wasn't soldered to the ground plane. But that could be it, uh, intentional, because usually when people design a PCB, they try to leave extra options and then you can do the soldering or not do the soldering, depending on how um, the unit uh, performs in EMC testing, for example. Sometimes actually soldering, soldering this can harm the performance of the shielding in some cases, because extra currents to flow over it and so on, which are bad. So what do we have here? This is actually 24LC128, I think that's an EP-ROM. Serial... Uh, I think it's Norflash, I'm not sure, I have to take a look. And we don't really have many ICs here. Uh, we have this little sponge, which is interesting, so that they this capacitor here to not drop against the PCB. What else do we have? What else do we have? There is this switch here. I'm not sure what it does. Let me take a look. Oh, perhaps it is the switch for the auto bandwidth control, I think. It's this one here. Then let's take a look at this PCB here. Um, this one looks to be mostly SMD, and it looks to be mostly, I think, okay. These tumor capacitors have been soldered here to make sure that they don't move. This here is the ferret rod antenna. It's actually quite physically well shielded, and there is also this sh shielding tape 
to protect it from the screen interference, I guess. Uh, when I did some testing for the screen interference, it didn't really uh, pick up any, so I think this is that this uh, sh shielding system works fine for that purpose at least. Yeah, let's see what else can we see. There's this thing here, which... Oh, this is audio amplifier, I think. T... TTA? A02M? I think. Let's see if I can take a photo of it. I can't read the letters. Oh, this isn't working. It's either Tango Bravo Alpha or Tango Delta Alpha. I'll have to look at the data sheets and see what it is. And unfortunately, I will not try to remove this PCB because I think it's going to be very difficult because it's quite deep instead of this plastic enclosure here. And uh, checking it, its underside, I think, is going to be complicated, and I'm not sure if there is anything interesting on it. What I do find... Well, I don't want to say strange, but notable, is the small amount of integrated circuits which we have. So this here is, says UTC VKA8 TA7640APL. I have to check that out to see what it is. I don't know the top of my head. We have two cans here. Uh, you can see them here. Uh, and yeah, this is as far as I'm going to go in this video. But what I don't really like is this little bit of damage on the PCB. That could have been a bit better. And also the capacitor here, which I already mentioned, which looks a bit damaged. That's not the best thing. The rest of the SMT work looks to be, I think, okay for the SMT stuff. But in any case, you can't comment much about the SMT without the microscope. Not sure if this capacitor here has been soldered properly. This side doesn't really look all that, ah, all that good. I was actually blocking it with my hand. Maybe I'll take a photo of that as well. But yeah, so this is probably all okay, more or less. Uh, and I don't really know if there's anything else I can add. The piece, the IC here. You cannot read because my camera is crappy at focusing, but I'll take a photo of it and edit it in. She has a marking of 3560 Delta Mic Romeo X ray 0016. Uh, so I'll take a look at that as well and then we'll see. One thing that I have managed to decipher are these SMT coils. They have a sort of marking system with dots on them. And I am not sure what those dots mean. They have different colors. So we have, let's say, pink, yellow, and red. And then there is red, red, and dark red, or something like that here. So... That could be something new which I haven't seen before. So this is it, I think, for this video. I'm going to put the radio back together. Uh, and then let's see at the end how it works. Bye bye, and I hope that you saw something interesting here. So as a little bit of extra at the end, I was wrong about this capacitor. It's not actually damaged in any way. Instead, it looks as if a drop of flux fell onto it and then that flux itself was damaged now that I have cleaned it up a little, little bit it seems to be quite okay and this resistor here which I wasn't sure if it was soldered properly it is I checked it so all the SMT soldering is fine it's just that there are 
some flux residues which make it look a bit yeah uh, messy so to say <laughs>